And welcome, Hoosier fans, to a decidedly non-victorious episode of the Assembly Call, as tonight your Indiana Hoosiers fall to the Fort Wayne Mastodons in Fort Wayne in front of a decidedly partisan Indiana crowd, 71-68 to in a game that simply featured an Indiana team that did not come with the energy level and the maturity needed to get a win like this, and... I really feel if you gave their coach truth serum before the game, he would have told you that he feared a performance like this. Because when you heard Tom Crean's comments to Don Fisher before the game, and when Fisher asked him, what do you want to see tonight? He said energy and maturity. And he kind of made it sound like he was a little bit worried uh, about his team's ability to bring it. Uh, and his team didn't bring it. And they were beaten by a team that absolutely did. Uh, we're obviously going to break down tonight the many failings of Indiana, but let us also tip our caps to Fort Wayne, uh, Bryson Scott, Conchar, all the guys on Fort Wayne who really played hard and took it to Indiana. Uh, it takes two to uh, to make an upset happen, one team to maybe not play as well as they're capable, and another team to play better uh, than maybe they normally play, and Fort Wayne certainly did that tonight, so kudos to them. Uh, I'm your host, Jared Morris. I am here tonight with Ryan Phillips and Will DeWitt. We will be breaking down this game for you. Uh, and we will begin, as we always do, with our Hoosier Proud banner moment. And obviously, it's hard to choose a banner moment on a night when Indiana loses 71-68 to Fort Wayne. But for me, the banner moment was late in the game when Indiana really needed buckets. And obviously, I mean, it was just a struggle all night long offensively. But when Indiana was able to be effective late in regulation and in overtime, it's when they went to Thomas Bryant. Uh, and to have a guy with Thomas Bryant's skill and his ability to get fouled and go to the free throw line and typically make those free throws. Now, he missed the front end of the one and run in overtime. So even the Hoosier Proud banner moment still, you know, <laughs> has uh, some negativity and some missed opportunities in there. But I thought for the most part, you know, Thomas, after a slow start, played hard and was effective. He had 18 points. He had 12 boards. Uh, he rebounded well. He had four offensive rebounds. Uh, and was 6'11 from the field, uh, one of two from downtown, but but really in the second half went inside a lot more, didn't get too comfortable staying outside. And so really in a game that didn't have many bright spots, I thought Thomas Bryant really you know, trying to will his team to victory there late uh, was, was one bright spot that stood out. Um, but there obviously won't be too many more as we go through the rest of tonight's postgame show. And tonight's banner moment brought to you by our friends at Hoosier Proud, an Indiana-based brand by Hoosiers for Hoosiers. Connor and the team at Hoosier Proud offer a line of T-shirts and accessories that are unmatched for anyone who wants a unique, stylish way to display their own pride in being a Hoosier. Check them out at HoosierProud.com and use the promo code ASSEMBLY to receive a 15% discount on your entire order. That's promo code ASSEMBLY to receive 15% off at HoosierProud.com. All righty. Well, let's move the ball, get some opening thoughts from the rest of our team. Ryan, we will start with you. Plenty to rant about. What are you going to choose? Uh, I mean, just the, I, I think I've got to talk about the offense in general. I'm going to single out some guys, but this just was not Indiana's offense all night. And, and I, you know, IPFW, all, all credit to the Mastodons. They played hard and they played good defense. They played aggressively. Um, so give them credit. But even at their best, not be able to hang with with Indiana. I, I just thought there was so much standing around on offense. I think Josh Newkirk, maybe he's just not comfortable bringing the ball up for this offense yet uh, I, because he was walking the ball up, and that's not Indiana. Even when you come off a dead ball situation, you run the ball up and you make your first pass and you get into the offense, and there was just too much passing around the perimeter, too much standing around, too much James Blackman Jr. driving into traffic. I mean, I realized that James was home in Fort Wayne and wanted to put on a show, but especially late after the third time he had driven into traffic and got nothing out of it, he needed to know on that last possession he could not be the guy to turn the corner and do something like that. Thomas um, Bryant ball, has to touch the ball on that possession. Exactly. He has to touch that the ball. ball. Has, that ball has to go. And, and people have been saying like, oh, well, Tom Crean should have called a timeout and set up a play. It doesn't matter. They know where the ball is supposed to go. They know the ball is supposed to go to Bryant. They know that out of that, if he gets doubled, he'll find somebody open. That, they, the, a timeout isn't going to change that. You know, They knew what they were supposed to do, and they didn't execute. And, and, and you can blame the coach all you want, and maybe some of the matchups and some of the substitutions will get in on that for him. But mm -hmm. you know what? In that situation, you've got a junior with the ball in his hands, and you've got guys around him who all know what they're supposed to do. There's no point in taking a time out there. Save it in case something happens and you need it later. 
I, you know, and obviously, you know, the ball has to go to your all American and it didn't, he didn't touch the ball. And, and that's on the entire roster that was on the floor. And, and these guys came out tonight. They were flat. They didn't, they were, they were playing Ole defense until he put in that zone, which was a great move by Crean. I mean, that was the only, that was the only positive of the game was the fact that their zone defense shut in the, uh, uh, shut Fort Wayne down completely shut them down and that was his call and it was the right call but you look at the a lot of the guys who were on the perimeter first of all Juwan Morgan should not start anymore at the point that was just he he just doesn't do anything for you there um I mean I like him in a pinch in that situation but he's not starting guy bringing the ball up so I I don't I mean there's plenty of rant about and I'll get into this over the course of the show but uh, you know it, it, Blackman Robert Johnson um Newkirk, Morgan, all of these guys who were ball handlers tonight with quotes around it, because Morgan, I don't believe, should be a primary ball handler, but whatever. They, they were the guys handling the ball, and they just did not get Indiana into the offense. They they would take 10 seconds off the shot clock to make their first pass. Then when they were on the perimeter, they just pass it around, maybe hold the ball, do it, and nobody was cutting. And, and the perimeter guys have to cut and move if this offense is going to work. And I don't know if they were rattled by being on the road or what, but – that that's your game right there. There was no movement on offense. There was no purpose, and that's different from what we've seen so far this year. Uh, when the, there have been slow moments in the game so far, but this was completely different, and and that was what cost in the end of the game. No activity, no movement, and no purpose. Well, let's take a quick pause because there's going to be plenty more ranting from Ryan as we go through tonight's show. Uh, and Ryan's rant is brought to us by TheBigLead.com. Let's go over to Will uh, and get your stat of the night brought to us by the Bears Brothers. What do you got for us, Will? Well, nothing good over here, Jared. Uh, tonight's stat of the night is going to have to be Indiana's poor three-point shooting. They're only 7 of 24 from beyond the line tonight, which is only 29.2%. And five different Hoosiers uh, attempted at least one three-point shot, if not more, and did not make a single bucket from beyond the arc tonight, which is pretty uh, upsetting considering the fact that you know the Hoosiers came in the 19th best country shooting from three-point land at 44.3%. And on top of that, Fort Wayne's defense allowed opponents to uh, 42% of their three-point shots, which is 314th in the country. And to come out here as flat as they did, I understand it's on the road. I understand. And, I mean, it wasn't even, like you said, it wasn't even like a hostile environment because most of the energy was for IU. Just to be that lackluster from beyond the arc, which is like this team's strength, is very disappointing and disheartening, especially moving forward. It is, you know, and as they say, live by the three, die by the three. And Indiana often lives by the three. And, and you can look at it that way and say, hey, if just a couple of those go down like they usually do, Indiana escapes with a win. But they didn't. And that's the point is sometimes you're going to have poor shooting nights. And if you can't count on your defense or if you can't count on something else to pick you up, you're going to be in trouble. And tonight, those threes weren't falling. And part of that was because they weren't getting as good a looks as they will often get when, as they, as, as Ryan was talking about, when they're doing what they need to be doing on offense. Uh, by the way, before we get too deep into this show, wallowing in the negatives, because there are a lot of them, I do want to give a hat tip to Zach McRoberts, who led Indiana in plus minus tonight at 12. Uh, didn't score, had a couple of rebounds, but I thought really did some nice things on defense. And whereas I really thought Juwan Morgan in the second half, even in the zone, was just just lackadaisical and, and not into it defensively. And, and here's the thing that, that frustrates me about tonight's game. Think back to early last season, Ryan. Remember how when Juwan and OG would come in, we would remark how when those guys came in, they played in stances, they got down, you know, the, the defensive energy always seemed to take a step up. And tonight, I thought those two guys were some of the biggest culprits in the defensive energy not being there. Now, OG apparently was sick. Uh, you know, in a way, I almost hope he was sick because that player that we saw out there tonight in the few moments he was out there was not OG Ananobi. I mean, he was a non-factor, but I, I just, I didn't see the same attention to detail, the same awareness, the same just overall effort from Juwan Morgan that we're used to seeing. And maybe we hold him to a high standard, but that's what, you know, that's what he's shown us that he can do. Um, uh, and I, I just thought that was a big reason why Indiana's defense struggled. I mean, look, I, I apparently OG Ananobi came out of the game and told the coaches he was sick. He couldn't go. And that's why he didn't come in very often. And then I don't think at all in the second half. I mean, maybe for he played one, one stretch in the second half. Yeah. Then, um, but after that, he was on the bench. And, and you know that something's wrong if he's not playing. Uh, but John Conchar abused uh, Juwan Morgan all night. Conchar finished with 15 points, 11 rebounds, five assists, a steal, and a block, and only two turnovers. And he made Juwan look bad 
all night long. And then on the offensive end, Morgan was missing missing layups, not getting fouls, not getting fouled. You know, when he just kind of take it in and throw it up instead of you know going strong and getting getting contact. And I'll give the officials credit. I thought the officials did a pretty good job for most of the night. I thought there were a few fouls late that could have gone. Uh, Indiana's way, but they didn't get the calls. But you know, for the most part, this was a pretty well officiated game. Which I agree. you know me, I, I rarely. Know. Say that. I know how weird is this night. Ryan's complimenting the official. Um, you know, I'd rather have them let guys play than than bog the game down. I, I thought a couple drives late they could have given fouls, but it doesn't matter because Indiana only shot fifty seven point nine percent from the free throw line, which we've been saying all year is a huge bugaboo for this team. This team needs to make free throws, and hey, you make. Four more free throws tonight, you win the game. Uh, 11 of 19 is unacceptable, especially when the guys missing are Newkirk went 2 of 4, uh, Johnson was 2 of 4, and Bryant was 5 of 8. you got to make free throws. I'm sorry. You, those are free points sitting there. And this team, as I've said, since before the season even started, free throws are going to be huge for this team. they got to make them, and, and they didn't tonight. As Will said, the three-point shooting was awful. I mean – you know, Morgan was also making mental mistakes. He was two of nine from the field, but then he also was 0 of three from three. And, you know, he's a three point shooter when he's wide open by himself, you know, and he can make them, sure. But, you know, late in the game, he had one in the corner where he had a guy kind of on him and he just kind of launched a three with Bryant in great post position. You know, I mean, it's just, this was just guys just playing stupid and, and yeah, all was. night and all night on both ends of the floor. So this is, here's my thing with this game. This game, could wind up being a blessing in the end if this team wakes the freak up from this. I I, I promise our radio uh, our, our radio producers. I was not going to swear there. I was just thinking of a good word to throw in there. But no, I mean it, it, they have to wake up. They're not the number three team in the country, and they got inflated because they had a great win against Kansas. And you know everyone's excited about this team, but I'm sorry, this is not the number three team in the country yet. They need to find leadership. They need to find somebody to follow, and they also need to learn how to play with adversity and continue to do that. And and tonight they just. Just, you know, they played down to their competition. I, IPFW, all praise to them for for coming out and playing hard. It was a huge game for them. But, you know, they're not on Indiana's level. And and the fact that Indiana played down to them, that, that's, that's, you know, that's not a good thing. It's a bad sign moving forward. There's another line, uh, another comment from Coach Crean in the pregame that, that I think was a bad sign. Uh, and we're going to get to that here in just a moment. Uh, but first, I do want to take a quick minute to tell you about our sponsor, SeatGeek, who we're very excited to have back with us for a second season here on the Assembly Call. Buying tickets online for sports and concerts has been a confusing process for a long time, as I think you'll agree. It's always been hard to find the best deal for that game or show that you want to go to, and none of those older ticket sites seem to want to change that. But SeatGeek is different. They've come along, and they've created an amazing app and website that makes it easier than ever for fans to buy and sell tickets, which is why SeatGeek is always the first place I go to to look for tickets to a game or concert because everything about SeatGeek is designed to make life easier for sports and music fans. They do all the price comparison for you by searching multiple ticket sites and ensuring that you get the best possible deal. They do the work and you save the time and money. And best of all, our listeners get a $20 rebate off their first SeatGeek purchase. So to get your $20 rebate on tickets, download the SeatGeek app, Go to the settings tab and click add a promo code and enter the promo code assembly and SeatGeek will send you $20 after you've made your first ticket purchase. Again, download the SeatGeek app and enter the promo code assembly today. You are listening to the Assembly Call IU Post Game Show. I'm Jared Morris here with Ryan Phillips and Will DeWitt, and we are breaking down Indiana's disappointing 71 to 68 loss tonight to Fort Wayne. Uh, so many different directions to go. You know, I really thought tonight, Ryan and Will, that we saw a team, especially, you know, in the second half and when the adversity hit, that seemed to be struggling to kind of figure out their roles. And I will say that one of the reasons why I think Zach McRoberts played so much and why, you know, take plus minus for what you want, but why he had the highest plus minus is he was a guy who came out tonight and absolutely filled his role. He knew his role wasn't to shoot. It wasn't to do anything crazy on offense. It was to go play hard defense, hustle for rebounds, hustle for steals, which he did. And I thought we saw some other Hoosiers that really seemed to be kind of wondering what their role was. Like, Ryan, you talked about how Josh Newkirk didn't seem to be playing the point guard position like Indiana wants to play it, pushing the pace. You know, on that last possession, James Blackman Jr. seemed at times there in the second half and, and overtime 
more interested in getting into the mano a mano battle against Bryce and Scott and making a big play off the dribble than just getting the ball to Thomas Bryant. And Tom Crean mentioned on the pregame show, Don Fisher asked him, you know, do you feel like guys are settling into their roles? And Crean just flat out said, no, we're not yet. He's like, now we have good kids and they're going to get it and they will, but we're not there yet. And, you know, again, I'm telling you, I, I bet if you ask Kareem, he felt a game like this was coming. And then, of course, you wonder why can't he do something to change it? I know a lot of fans tweeted that to me. Well, you know, sometimes when you're a coach, you know, you can sense that it's coming. And I thought Kareem did try some things in the game, going to the zone, putting McRoberts in. He tried some things. Now, some other lineup decisions I didn't agree with as much, and we can get to that. But did you kind of sense that, Ryan, that this is this is a team? We talked about how much losing the experience guys was going to matter. And maybe, you know, you win that game against Kansas, so everything is hunky-dory. You play two kind of cupgate games, so they don't highlight any of your biggest weaknesses. And I thought a game like tonight really did that and showed that this is an Indiana team still struggling with losing a lot of those upperclassmen and still trying to feel out what their roles are, who's going to do what when. And that's really going to be highlighted in a tough road environment. Well, I think you guys, you and Andy, really seem to to think that they played well against Liberty, especially to open the game. And I didn't. I didn't like the way they came out. Um, well, I thought how? Were, against Liberty. I thought the result was fine, but I just thought they were slow and they, you know, weren't necessarily attacking the way they wanted to attack. I thought they were hitting shots, and and you know, I just think that there were signs that that maybe they were playing above their head ranking wise, you know, and, and uh, I mean, look, nobody is going to take that Kansas win away. That was a great win and they were locked in and they played very well against a very good team. There's no discounting that. The problem is you got to bring that kind of effort and energy every single game. And I just haven't felt it in these, these, uh, these last three games. And it's not so much that I feel like these guys don't know their roles. I just feel like they're not fit into them yet. And they're not, it's not an innate thing where you know immediately what you're supposed to do. It's more like I have to think about what I need to do and what I'm supposed to do. So like they're aware of what their roles are. They're just not immediately going there. I'll tell you a guy who I thought played well tonight when in his limited minutes was Deron Davis. I, I agree. Was, Why did he not play more in the second half? I did not get that I, at all. I think it was hard defensively to have him match up against anybody. It was him or Bryant. It, they couldn't both be in there because Concho was working the middle and he could beat both of them easily off the dribble. And I think that that was a difficult matchup. And then when they went to zone, they needed somebody who could come out and guard the three on the wing. And Davis really probably, I don't know if you can trust him to do that yet. Uh, I thought offensively, on the offensive end, I thought he was great. Defensively, he made a couple nice plays, but he just it was a tough matchup for him, and, and especially as a freshman. Look, if he was a sophomore, junior, he could adjust and, and make it happen, but just defensively, you needed to hope that Morgan figured it out, honestly, with the lack of OG there to help him out. I mean, so I think it was just one of those things where it was an awkward fit. I thought offensively, he didn't score. But I thought he was super active, and I thought that he, you know, made a lot of things happen. Um, so yeah, I, I look. There were some. There were some guys who played pretty well. I mean, look in stretches. I thought Newkirk was good. He was three of four from three. Ended up with thirteen points. He turned the ball over three times. But honestly, with the way the season's gone, that's not that bad for our primary ball handler. But I just thought he was bringing the ball up slow, and he was trying to play like a conventional offense. And this is the opposite of a conventional offense. It is a fast. Get the ball up, even off a dead ball. Get the ball up. Get it in. Make your cut. Pass the ball. Move it. And I just thought he was setting the wrong tone. And I think I think the same can be said for Robert Johnson and James Blackman as well when they brought it up. And Juwan Morgan. Juwan Morgan has never been a guy to push the ball very well. And and I just I think that that lineup. While I think it's fun for Crean to like have the idea, of what if I could have a six eight primary ball handler? God, I could do so many things with that. It's just a bad idea right now. And and I would rather have one of the freshmen running running with those lineups than than Jawan running the ball up like that. I don't I don't think it's to Indiana's benefit, and I think that Jawan's energy off the bench is something that was sorely missed tonight. Especially when that the game started going poorly early on, they didn't have that guy to pull in and just sort of be the Swiss Army knife defensively and help out. Yeah, you know, your comments about Newkirk are interesting because I thought there was a sequence in the first half at the end of the first half when Indiana played really well and they and they closed out, got it down to two points. You know, Indiana was really just, you know, lazy on offense, settling. And I thought he really attacked and set a good tone. 
but it, he, he was. He was so up and down. There were two times I tweeted something positive about him, and the very next possession, he would go make a wild turnover. And so you're kind of, you know, with Josh Newkirk right now, it, it's a little bit like Troy Williams, where you're getting some of the good, but then some of the bad. And he'll make a great play driving, and then he'll make kind of a wild and crazy play driving and, and make a pass that, you know, goes out of bounds. Um, let's talk about Robert Johnson real quick, who I thought it was a real mixed bag for him tonight. I thought early on, he was one of the only guys providing any offense. And if it weren't for Robert Johnson, this might've been a 20 to four game because, you know, Robert made a few shots and got that steal, but he also had five turnovers and would oscillate between brilliant and boneheaded more than we've seen him do since his freshman year. I mean, I thought this game was a real step back for Robert who had been really solid with the assist turnover ratio so far in the year tonight, only two assists five turnovers, but he did have 16 points and six rebounds and made some big shots. And I think, he, did he score the only points uh, <clears throat> in overtime on that three-pointer? I think he's the only guy who scored in overtime. So, I mean, he did some things to where he kind of kept Indiana in the game. And yet at other points, you know, he just gave possessions away and, you know, just a total mixed bag for him. And I thought the same thing from Blackman, who I thought was pretty good in the first half, you know, got some hustle plays, had some offensive rebounds. And then it's like in the second half, he reverted back to freshman year, James, trying to go one on one, forcing the issue too much on offense and, you know, just trying to get bailed out on fouls when there were clearly better options on the offensive end. So, you know, for Indiana to win on the road, those two guys, your junior guards, your leaders, they have to play well. And I just thought those two guys were too inconsistent throughout the night. And that kind of set the tone for Indiana to be pretty inconsistent throughout the night. I, I got to jump in here. Here's the thing about Indiana right now and where they're at. The problem is, is that last year when things would go bad, you had guys like Yogi and Zyslav to keep everyone in check. Beal felt too as the year went on. And even Troy Williams at times to keep these guys in check when they'd get out of it. Well, guess what? Now, Blackman and Johnson have to be those guys, you know, and Newkirk too. They have to be the guys that step up and say, hey, focus. Like, what's going on? They can't be the problem. I mean, Yogi would get crazy sometimes, but he'd always bring it back down to earth and refocus. And so these guys need to be the ones to step up. And maybe a loss like this, again, it's it's the fourth game of the season. It's a bad loss. Don't get me wrong. I'm not excusing it. But maybe this team needs this right now because they were riding high. ESPN put them number one in their power rankings. This, you know, they've got up to number three in the rankings, getting some first place votes. I mean, this team needed something to drag it back down to earth. Even if they won this game by in overtime, it would have been a huge wake up call. But, but Ryan, at what point are we going to be OK playing as a favorite? Like we have this thing where we're the underdog and we pr play really well. And then as soon as we start getting we've seen this with cream teams and it's like we come out, we get ranked number one or we get a high ranking. Something good happens. And then we lay an egg like this. Well, I mean, is there something I think it's, systemic that's causing? No, that? I no, I think it I think it, it, it might be. Uh, obviously, this kind of thing has happened before. But this the problems this time are unique to this year's team. The leadership void needs to be filled, and people need to step up. So, I, I, again, I'm not okay with this, and no one should be. But I'm talking about long term, like the Duke loss last year. Long term was a good thing, you know. It, it wound up being, however painful it was, it wound up being a good thing. Um, but this might be that kind of thing, and it needs to be because these guys need to wake up. I mean, you cannot sleep through half of a game. I don't care who you're playing and expect to win. There's too much parity in college basketball. And these guys slept through, what, 30 minutes of this game before they finally woke up, played some good zone defense, and and sent it to overtime? I mean, and even in that overtime, they fell apart. So I, I just – I realize I'm ranting a lot here, but this is stuff that – you know, this team needs to figure out because it's not going to, no one's going to do it for them. You know, these guys need to figure it out. The coaches, the coaches can only do so much from a leadership standpoint. These guys need to develop their own, you know, system of keeping each other in check. And, and the last year's team did that. And this year's team needs to do that. Do you think Thomas Bryant can be that guy? Because, I mean, he I, was I certainly the rock if there was one in the second half who kind of kept Indiana going, you know, and kept Indiana I in the do. game. I do. But here's my thing about Thomas, and I've been saying it since the preseason i just i don't want him to fall in love with the threes and if he's standing on the perimeter he can make a three-pointer yeah sure but how can you lead if you're not in position to do what you're best at 
And so in the second half, they finally made a concerted effort to get him the ball in the post and, and they worked from there and you can lead from there when you're doing what you're best at and you're repeatedly putting the ball in the hoop and repeatedly getting fouled and doing work down there, you can lead from there. You can't lead if you're not doing what you're best at and you're not showing an example to people. So he has to not fall in love with that perimeter game. He has to be where he's best. Now, if you want to step out on perimeter every once in a while, take a guy away from the hoop, make a three, I'm fine with it. But that is not where he needs to live. He needs to live where he's best. And you can lead, again, you can lead if you're doing what you're best at. But it, again, it's like when John, when when Blackman is sitting out there draining threes and, and moving off cuts and getting open and all that, he can lead from that. When he's driving into traffic, it's hard to tell other guys and keep them in check You know, when he's doing the things that are hurting the team. So... Any of those guys could be a leader. OG can be a leader. He's not really a vocal type, but he could be a leader if he's dominating on both ends of the floor. Jawan Morgan, if he's being a Swiss Army knife, as we always call him, and, and doing what you know, winning, making winning basketball plays and things like that, he can get guys in, in you know focused. But if you're not doing, if you're not playing well, it's hard to get guys to listen to you. And, and so that's what needs to change. Is somebody needs to step up, be consistent, and then tell guys what they need to do and and be the guy in charge. There's there's a wide open gap right now for somebody to fill that leadership role and whoever it is it's easy just do what you're best at and make guys follow you and it'll be it's it's easy it's wide open you can become an indiana basketball legend if you step into that role because people will remember you as the guy who led you know we'll we'll never forget nick zaisloff yogi farrell max bielfeld those guys we'll never forget them because they stepped up and led from the front and, and and whoever wants to be that guy can be that guy on this team. They just have to actually do it. Yeah. And, th and this seems like a game will, where, where maybe Indiana really missed Colin Hartman. I mean, obviously his loss wasn't felt as much through the first three games, but, and a part of that was because you had Juwan Morgan things, you know, that he was doing all those kind of Colin Hartman things and even at another level. And tonight he really wasn't. And maybe this is a game where having a guy like Hartman can help settle you down on the road and, and, and be that stabilizing force. Yeah, right. I mean, according to the box score that you sent me, Hartman did play eight minutes tonight. But uh, <laughs> so maybe we shouldn't be trusting that box score for our numbers. No kidding. But uh, yeah, what is going on in Fort Wayne? Jeez, I don't know. It also says that Tim Priller had minus one assists. So <laughs> yeah, I don't that's, know what's going on with it. Those are definitely not Colin Hartman things. But yeah, we're missing no. that one kind of guy, like you said, who does those little things. And we need a going back to the conversation you guys were having about fulfilling your roles. We need to find someone who's willing to be that kind of guy. And in a weird way, it was Zach McRoberts tonight. Obviously, he didn't you know, score any points, like we said, but he was doing a lot of those little things and doing them well. But we need someone who can do this consistently game in and game out. But for me, the biggest point uh, coming out of this game is, do you think, Jared, that this is kind of like the game that we're shown how much we are missing OG Ananobi when he's not out there? Because if he would have been out there in a healthy one, I think his spark and just how he leads by example might have been enough to maybe put us over the edge tonight. No, of course. I mean, you lose by three points. OG gives you no points, one assist, and one rebound, and and the one block that he had. But, you know, I mean, again, I'm hoping, and I think I saw somewhere that OG has the flu, and again, I'm hoping that's the case because, I mean, we have never seen him play defense that lackadaisically. I mean, get up and down the court that lackadaisically. So something was off, uh, you know. And, and yes, I mean, I think this was... This really showed you how important having OG and how important, you know, Juwan Morgan doing Juwan Morgan things, you know, getting six, seven rebounds, not four, you know, making those layups, not missing point blank layups. It showed how important those guys are to this team. And it's going to be really hard for Indiana to, to beat any Big Ten teams without, you know, if, if they get what they got tonight from OG and Juwan. They need those guys playing well. Uh, I want to talk. There were a couple of decisions uh, Tom Crean made. Some good, some bad. I want to talk about those here in just a second. Uh, we will get to that next. Uh, but first, I do want to tell you real quick, uh, take a minute, tell you why you should activate your free Assembly Call membership. And there are three quick reasons. Number one, it's quick and easy. Go to assemblycall.com slash join. It'll take you 15 seconds. Uh, number two, it's how you get our best content because by joining, you'll receive our weekly Six Banner Saturday IU Hoops News Roundup as well as our detailed post-game analysis emails. Uh, so if you want to relive this game, make sure you're on that email list so you get that email tomorrow morning. Uh, and then also it's how you connect with us in the Assembly Call community because only members can access our moderated post-game live chat and discussion forum. So if you like what you hear on the Assembly Call, becoming a member is a logical next step. Join us for free at assemblycall.com slash join. 
You're listening to the Assembly Call. We're breaking down Indiana's 71 to 68 loss to Fort Wayne. I'm Jared Morrissey with Ryan Phillips and Will DeWitt. Ryan, let's talk about Tom Crean's night. Uh, look, in the second half, you know, it's what was it, 61 to 49? I mean, Indiana's teetering on the brink of almost getting blown out, and they switched to the zone, and that really helped to stabilize things. And so I think. Crean will certainly receive uh, praise for that decision. I thought it was a good one. I thought the decision to play Zach McRoberts for extended minutes, you know, maybe, you know, you might start thinking to yourself, why is a walk-on playing this many minutes when we have so much talent? But look, you're going to have games like that. I mean, Ryan Burton hit a couple of big threes against Rutgers last year. Uh, you know, we saw Jeff Howard do this a couple of times. Like there are going to be some games where you need to use your whole bench and some guys don't have it. And McRoberts stepped up. But I really thought that there were some questionable lineup decisions late in the game once indiana had stabilized the game and you know it, they get it to 62 to 60 and there's a couple of possessions where indiana just comes up empty robert johnson missed a three off the dribble newkirk turned it over uh you know fort wayne then went down and made a three it was 65 to 60 newkirk came back and made a three and so again you know we get it down to a two-point game but i just felt like there were too many possessions where indiana basically only had one shooter and for some reason, Crean was alternating Robert Johnson and James Blackman Jr. late instead of having both of them on the floor. And so when you only have one of them, then they're surrounded by Newkirk, by Juwan Morgan, and you just have guys who aren't really going to make shots. I mean, despite the fact that Newkirk hit three out of four, he's still, you know, not a guy that you probably feel that comfortable late in the game making, you know, making that shot. And I just thought there were some questionable lineup choices at a time when Indiana really needed to get something going on offense. I didn't think that they had the right line up out there to do it what did you think of some of those late game choices uh, you know honestly I, I it's hard for me to criticize because everybody was off tonight so i i don't know at some point i think he was just trying things like you know i mean and we've seen him do that before and it's not it's not very uh it doesn't give you a whole lot of confidence when you're <laughs> when you're when your coach is just throwing things on the wall to see what sticks but um yeah, I, I don't know. I, it, the whole game felt off, you know, lineup wise. Uh, felt just like the Penn State game from last year. Just like guys, I mean, it's like nothing he tried was working offensively. It really wasn't. No combinations. Even the freshmen came in and they usually provide a ton of energy, and they did, but it was completely unfocused energy. You know, I mean, they were throwing the ball all over the all over the court. They were just not. They were, you know, Curtis Jones came in and took two awful three pointers. You know, it's like. Do you, do you think those shots he made against Kansas have almost been a little bit fool's gold? Because he's come in yes. and been really trigger happy. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I think that we, you know, given his track record in high school and things like that, I think everybody expected that. That is kind of the guy he was. He has no conscience on those shots. Um, you know, Devontae Green came in and provided a little bit of a spark, but also turned it over twice on two awful passes. Um, you know, so I think that. It, there was, you know, he was trying to go to those guys to see if they'd give a spark. They didn't give anything. And then he sort of, he really shortened the bench in the second half. And you're right. I, Blackman and Johnson, I think, I, I think they were alternating because they were both standing around so much and they weren't doing anything. And the thing that bothered me was Johnson was driving to the basket early and, and at least getting contact and, and, and trying to draw a foul. Um, but, you know, the second half, it just seemed like everybody was standing and, and nobody was driving. Nobody was turning that corner and getting to the hoop or at least trying to draw, you know, some help from the defense or anything like that. It was just dribble side to side. Nobody turning it up north and south. And I mean, I think that's what sunk Indiana. There just was not enough aggressiveness on offense. And given how poorly they played defensively in the first half and, and the beginning of the second half, that, that sunk them. I mean, they need if they're going to play that way on defense, they need to be going offensively. And they weren't. Yeah, and Will, you've got an interesting stat here. Uh, you know, that basically shows even when Indiana was aggressive getting to the bucket, they weren't very effective. Yeah, I mean, they really weren't uh, looking at the stats here. They were 8 of 20 with their layup tonight. That's 40%. Those should be 100% each and every game. I mean, you're going to have a few that obviously don't make it. That's just given. But to be shooting 40% or only making 40% of your layups is uh, just god awful especially a couple that just couple that with the poor three-point shooting and it's just what are you gonna do yeah if you're if you're missing layups like that it should be because you're getting fouled and you're getting to the line not jumping up into guys who are blocking you and there, there were so many times where they didn't even pump fake or anything guys right in front of them they just jumped into a block and and bryant did it 
You know, I mean, this is your best player and All-American is doing that. So this was contagious. And 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 you see sometimes when guys play like this, when guys play flat and they play stupid, which is Indiana played stupid tonight. There's no question about that. Yeah. Um, they played flat, they played slow, and they played stupid, which is not this team. This is, that is not what this team does and not what last year's team did. And they played that way, and it's contagious. Everybody has it. Uh, we're getting some confirmation here from the post game. Tom Crean saying OG is sick. Uh, not sure what it is. It started this afternoon. We tried to push him through there, but he didn't have it. Which just, I mean, it's it seems strange. It's almost like they didn't know he was sick until the second half. So I don't know if he didn't say anything. I mean, they obviously tried to put him out after, there. But uh, just just a heads up, uh, it was tweeted out early in the game that uh, after the first timeout, he came over and said that he he couldn't go. And then I'm sure they tried to get some fluids in him and try and get him to to do something. But he he said early on that he he couldn't go. Yeah. So it wasn't like they just discovered it. He he said early in the game, no, nah, I can't. And they they ran him out there a couple times maybe to see if getting warmed up probably would would do something. But. That's what I mean. They didn't discover it until the game started. So I don't know if he didn't say anything, if it didn't crop up until the game started. Who knows? I mean, at least it's an explanation for his play. Well, uh, I mean, was, knowing OG, I mean, he doesn't talk too much anyway. He's very brief with his words. So maybe it's just – and knowing him, he was probably at least trying his best to give it a go and keep it under the radar and yeah. hope for the best, but didn't work out. Yeah. So where else do we go with this? I mean, Ryan, now, you know, so Indiana loses this game. Obviously, the North Carolina game looms. There's a game Sunday against Mississippi Valley State, which, you know, look, they're one of literally one of the worst teams in college basketball. They're in the 340s. So, I mean, Indiana could come out and totally sleepwalk through that game and probably still win by 25 or 30. So is it, in a sense, good that Indiana has a game like that to get themselves righted, maybe get a little bit of confidence back before the North Carolina game? Or is this just going to be a wasted 40 minutes where we learn nothing and we've got to wait until the North Carolina game to see if any of the lessons from tonight were learned? No, what I would say is the good thing, it has nothing to do with Mississippi Valley State. The good thing is they have a couple days off now through the holiday to think about this and to stew on this. You know, it's better to have this loss now than to have it Sunday with North Carolina coming in right after. I want them to sit and think about this loss, watch tape of it, be embarrassed because they should be embarrassed. I mean, IPFW played it, you know, good for them. That's a great win for that program and hats off to them. Uh, but Indiana should be embarrassed with the way they played. And, and, and so this is the opportunity for them to look at this and say, you know what? This is not okay. We need to get together and we need to figure this out. And, and that's the thing. If they don't figure this out, they've got that North Carolina game. And right now, North Carolina is in Maui blowing out Oklahoma State by 17 uh, at the beginning of the second half. So that's a team that's not fooling around. And that's a team that's going to come in here, rank number, they're ranked number four right now. They're obviously going to leapfrog Indiana. Um, I, you know, so <laughs> this is a chance for, for Indiana to really refocus things. I, I you know, Mississippi Valley State, that game is a chance for Indiana to maybe establish some of those things we were talking about, about leadership, about focus, about guys, you know, being where they're supposed to be. So that game is an opportunity. Um, but, you know, how they handle it, we'll see. I mean, it's it's a, it's a not about the loss. And we've said this for years on this show for, for the team. It's not about the loss. It's not about what happened tonight, although that's embarrassing, all that stuff. It's about how they respond to that and how they react to it. And teams can either grow or they can fall apart because of a night like tonight. Last year, the team grew from that Duke loss and grew from those early season losses in Maui. It took a while to get it all straightened out, but they became better for it for those losses. That's what has to happen here. You know, if they, they can just wallow in self pity tonight if they want, or they can say, guys, they can look at each other and say, guys, this isn't happening again. We're not doing this again. Yeah. And that's the thing is, who's it? going to do that? Because last year there were strong no. senior leaders that lifted that team up and made it happen. And that's the question now is who's going to, who, who are going to be the guys who step up and do that on this year's team? Yeah. And, and like I said, that opportunity is wide open for somebody. That is an open position that somebody can step into and be a leader. And, and I'll tell you right now, it may need to be Tom Crean. And that's not a long term answer. And, and Crean has talked all the time about how important the internal leadership is of the team. But you look at some of his quotes. Uh, you know, we needed to make the next pass. I'm ashamed of that, to be honest with you, because that's not how we play. He's absolutely right. Offensively, it did not look like how Indiana played. I don't even recognize the team that we saw tonight. And as he followed up, I'm going to take full responsibility for that, that we didn't move the ball the way we needed to, and I'm going to get it fixed, which is true. I mean, it shouldn't take 40 minutes, 45 minutes of that not happening to get some kind of fix. But for whatever reason, that message wasn't getting through. And this may need to be a point where right now, if there is not strong internal leadership on this team, that Crean has to provide that. 
and, and lead from the top. And I know he wants it to be internally driven. Um, but and he's made mention of how, you know, he's got a lot of nice kids, but they're quiet and, and needing people to step up and communicate. And that's both communicating on defense and just communicating generally when it comes to leadership. And I think some of the issues that you know, Kareen has talked about, if you remember back to Hoosier hysteria, he talked about how it was going to take a while. And, you know, it's kind of like cuts, you know, interesting. Kareen's kind of downplaying what seems like it'll be a pretty, pretty good season. And then the Kansas win. But some of these little issues that have bubbled beneath the surface, they all came out in this really bad, ugly volcano tonight. And, and, you know, look, Indiana's like Ryan said, you've got the holiday to think about it. You've got Sunday to come back and put together 40 strong minutes, get back into good habits because you better be in those good habits when North Carolina comes. Because if you play any with a, any semblance of how you played tonight, they're going to actually blow blow Indiana's doors off. And you wouldn't think Indiana will because it'll be a home game. Um, but we'll just have to see. Um, so Ryan is informing me in the chat that he has something else. We are going to get to Ryan something else here in just a moment. Uh, and then get to our last call. Before we do that, one more quick reminder that a great way to support the Assembly Call is by ordering your official Assembly Call t-shirt from HoosierProud.com. Go to HoosierProud.com and check out their entire selection of unique, stylish apparel that anyone with Indiana roots will love. And don't forget to use the promo code ASSEMBLY for 15% off. That works for our Assembly Call logo t-shirts and anything else you buy. And again, the URL is HoosierProud.com. All right, you are listening to the Assembly Call IU post game show. We are dissecting Indiana's seventy-one to sixty-eight loss to Fort Wayne tonight. I'm Jared Morris here with Ryan Phillips and Will Dewitt. Uh, Ryan, what do you have for us? So my brother-in-law, who uh, is now a father for the fourth time after yesterday, congratulations! Uh, yeah, yeah, good for him. Uh, <laughs> He didn't do a whole lot. My sister did. Most of it. Uh, <laughs> yes, congratulations to her. So uh, we have, you know, a jokingly adversarial relationship. He, he's a Penn State grad. So whenever Penn State's playing someone, I'll text him, give him a little crap about, you know, who they're playing and you know, rooting for that team. And tonight he was fully rooting for uh, Fort Wayne as we we're sitting watching it together. By midway through the second half, he felt so bad for me that he was rooting for Indiana to do something and asking what I've seen them play before. They don't play like this. What is going on? And, and that's, I think that's how we all feel right now is sort of, you know, and it took that, that outside perspective to make me laugh about it because this was not Indiana tonight. This isn't Indiana basketball. This is not how these guys play. Even last year when the defense was terrible, the offense did not play like this. The offense moved the ball and scored a lot of points. It just got a lot of points scored on them. So I, I think that, What's what's getting me through this? Uh, because it's it's certainly something I felt horrible about during the game. But but as we come on here, a lot of times we talk these things out and we feel better. It's like going to your shrink. Exactly. Um, That's why we do this. That's why we do it. Doctor Jared <laughs> is on the is uh, sitting there while I'm on the couch. But it um I, I think the thing that that makes me feel a little bit better about it is it definitely wasn't Indiana. You know, and, and this is, you know, hopefully this is an anomaly, but also it's an opportunity, as we keep saying. It's an opportunity to get better. It's an opportunity to learn from their mistakes, and it's an opportunity for somebody to learn how to lead and to become a leader and make sure this doesn't happen again. So there are all these negatives tonight, and we know them, and we've been over them. But at the very least, like, we know that the Indiana teams under Tom Crean have been here before and overcome it. So that's that's sort of the way you have to look at this. Is it's not about as I said before, it's not about the loss. It's about what happens next, and and if they can you know dig out of this hole. And and clearly they dug themselves a pretty deep hole tonight. This is not a this is not a good loss. It's not going to look good on the resume. And also to Andy Bottoms, who I know is probably watching somewhere. Um, Stop, shut up about the uh, true road games, okay? Can we just not do that anymore? Let's no, just... okay. Now, now, hold on a second because I, I – someone, someone – well, and that's the thing is, you know, someone did tweet, you know, this is why coaches don't want to schedule road games like this and especially why it's always a risk to schedule a game inside the state because you could lose a game like this. But that's, that's why a game like this is great because you could lose it if you don't play well. And so I, to me, this, the fact that Indiana lost this game is all the more reason to schedule more of these games. Because if you're going to lose a game like this, it means that you needed it. So I absolutely think Indiana needs to schedule more games like this. No, I mean, I, you've got to go in there and win games like this. It's a game no, that I, Indiana as a program needs to win. 
I don't disagree. Uh, the danger with a game like this, though, is that this this is Fort Wayne's entire season is focused on this game. You know what I mean? And and so it means nothing to Indiana. It feels like that going in. It, but it, why it, doesn't it mean something to Indiana? Well, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It, but we've talked about this before. And it's like anytime you suit up for Indiana, you should be up for a game. Well, it's hard to get up for a game against Fort Wayne when you're playing North Carolina in a week and you played Kansas to open the season. And, you know, I mean, it's just, okay, how about the fact that 10,000 IU fans are there to watch you? I really I here's the thing. Do you really think that matters to 19? 19, 20 year old kids come maybe on, you know should. what i'm talking about no no it, see it probably no, I, should it should i, I got right. in a conversation with someone today about whether or not this was a trap game and i really didn't think it was because to me a trap game is you know you're going to some faraway place like happy valley it's sandwiched between two really big games you're not going to get up for it i really thought indiana was going to come out and play well with it being kind of a home environment the first real charged environment they've had since the kansas game and, and look i'm not concerned for what you said, that this wasn't Indiana. You know, it, it's frustrating to get beaten not playing your game, but we know that Indiana is not going to play like this very often. But I am concerned that Indiana couldn't get up for a game like this because I really, it, you know, it's kind of like Maui last year. How did we come out and just sleepwalk there? You know, I just, I, I really don't understand that. I thought Indiana was going to come out well, and play well, and that's part of why I'm disappointed is the lack of it's energy less tonight. For me, it's less It's less about Indiana. I mean, yeah, obviously, there's plenty on the Indiana side. But you know that Fort Wayne is going to come out wanting to prove a point and, and wanting to, to – this is – you know, they're upsetting the number three team in the country, and they're playing it at home, and they're – you know, have all this energy and stuff. And so that makes it doubly hard on Indiana trying to get up for a team that's far below their level. Now, should that be the case? No, but I'm talking real-world terms. This is what happens. Well, maybe and, just and, have a little humility and don't look at the team as right. so far below your level. I mean, I'm just I, – I, you're, you're right. But I'm talking. We're talking about 18, 19, 20 year old kids uh, who get it in their head and believe. And I'm telling the press. you, I think that's what Kareem sensed. I really think that's exactly and, what he sensed tonight. And and I, you know, I didn't hear his pregame interview, but I'm not surprised that he said something like that, especially given some of what we saw in the earlier games. Yeah. Can I chime in here real quick, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hop in, Will. Thanks. No, you're I not can, allowed. This sorry. Is, this is Jared and I's <laughs> therapy. Oh, I wanted when you guys were going at it, I just had to back out. But uh, I mean, even after the game uh, on Wednesday, I mean Saturday. Sorry, my weeks are getting off. Thanksgiving break here at IU. But uh, the game on Saturday, he talked about uh, how he was looking forward to this matchup and the kind of energy that they would have to play with, you know, in order to come out with the victory. He. Tom Crean was not underselling, you know, or underestimating what this Fort Wayne team could do. But like you said, the, might, the players might have. They might not have listened to their coach, which obviously uh, maybe this could be a lesson for them to actually pay attention to what coach is saying. Yeah, maybe they read Jeff Goodman's article ranking Indiana number one in the country and believed that a little such bit too much. Such poor timing by Jeff. I love yeah. Jeff, but such poor timing. Thanks, man. Jeff. Seriously. And by the way, Will, you're a Bears fan, so you have lots of experience dealing with excruciating losses. Any advice on uh, how we should deal with this? Hey, what yeah. about the resident Chargers fan here? <laughs> we can, I mean, it, it pains me to say it, but I can just pull out that Aaron Rodgers quote and just relax. I mean, we're going to yeah, be fine. It is, it is definitely a time to – look, this is – I don't think this is a canary in the coal mine type game yet. I, you know, I, I think – this game highlighted some issues that we knew were already there that we forgot about when we got swept up in the euphoria of the big win over Kansas and the two cupcake games after. So this was a reminder of the many issues that this team still has that one big win over Kansas wasn't going to take away. Um, and so I think it highlights those. It certainly, you know, opened up kind of a big gaping wound that's going to need to be healed. But, you know, it, 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 I, it this isn't the reason to, you know, jump off you know, jump off the ship, off the bandwagon, and everything is going downhill. Um, certainly no yeah, need for that yet. I think also we need to recognize that Fort Wayne is not a bad team. That's a pretty good team. No, like, they're they're the one other team in the non-conference that was going to be able to compete and, with Indiana. And it was is very well coached as well. I think. And, you know, there's some guys who have been around and played in big games before. So uh, I think that's, that, that's something to remember. Uh, and also just one last thing. I think that as you said, this team needed a wake up call of some kind. And, and I think that th this is it. I mean, this is, you know, this is the chance for them to, to really grow as a group. And, and, you know, it, it, it'd be nice if it was uh, it, through a, t a close win, but you know what, this, this is a slap in the face and hopefully they, they can grow from it. Yeah. It's look, it's the only thing that can come from this. I mean, uh, it's easy to say that after the fact, you've got to use this to grow. You certainly would rather use it to grow with a tough one point win where you'd have all these things to point out. But now it's even more important that Indiana really grow from this because this is look, 
if this is a rudderless team, if this is a team that doesn't have any leaders, that has a bunch of really, really good, nice followers, this is the kind of loss that can tear a team apart. Ryan, you already said it. And I think we're going to find out pretty quickly within the next couple of weeks, you know, what, what the truth is. Because last year's team showed itself to have incredible resolve, incredible internal leadership, and they battled through. And we're going to find out what this team is made of. All right, let's go to last call. Will, you bat first. Awesome. Well, we've kind of hit on this, but there's plenty of time to reflect on this loss, and it's now past midnight here in Bloomington, which means that big matchup against UNC is only a week away. But they need to take this loss, learn from it, learn that, hey, we're mortal. We can't just go out there and think we're, you know, we're world beaters, um, especially when they go up against some smaller teams besides, you know, obviously UNC coming up. But I'm hoping they look at that game as kind of like a redemption game, a game that they can go out there and prove like, hey, we can go out there and compete with these better schools. And we're not the team that you saw in Fort Wayne tonight. And that's what I'm hoping they can do. And I'm also hoping that Coach Crean can kind of go out there and not be like, I told you so, but more of along the lines of like, okay, now you guys have learned a lesson to not underestimate a team. And now we're going to take this and move forward with it. And I really hope that's what they do. But right now, Jared, we have a, you know, we have a group of guys that look like they're playing at Indiana. And I think we just got to get back to playing for Indiana. And I think that's the big thing. Hmm. Good point. Will. Ryan, last call. Yeah. I, I mean, I'd echo some of the things that Will said. I think that this is a team that uh, is not the team that you saw tonight. Uh, and I think that as we've said, this is a team that that needs to find an identity and 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 find some leadership and then go out and and make things happen and and be leading in games from the front instead of reacting to what the other team is doing and and put pressure on opponents instead of being pressured and then having to fight back and I think that's when Indiana's at its best under Tom Crean and um, so yeah I think that this is this is a slap in the face this is a, a gut punch for Indiana who these guys are probably all really high on themselves coming into tonight. And, and, you know, they should be, they had a, they had a great run to start the season, but that doesn't, you know, you're only as good as your last game. And so right now they're not very good. And, and as we said from the beginning and Tom Crean said this at Hoosiers hysteria, and I think we all kind of agreed with it. This is a team we're not going to be able to judge fully until maybe mid December because they've got a lot of things to figure out. And this was just evidence of that. I mean, they, you know, it was something we probably should have expected. I think, uh, expectations got adjusted after that Kansas game. Game. But you know what? We're kind of back to where we were, where we were saying this team, you know, we need to we need some time to figure out this who this team is and evaluate them. So I'm back there with this. I think that we got to wait till mid-December for somebody to step up and find leadership. It took time last year. That season ended up being great. And uh hopefully this this season winds up being the same way and, and we find somebody to step up. And we said before the season started, this is a team with the talent. They're going to win some games they maybe shouldn't win, like the Kansas game, and they'll probably lose some games that they shouldn't lose. And that clearly is what happened tonight. You know, I think a lot of people would have taken a three and one start, uh, assuming that there was going to be that loss to Kansas. And that's right where Indiana sits at three and one, a little bit different path to get there. Um, but now Indiana has a big opportunity. And, and, you know, look, I think as you watch the Mississippi Valley State game on Sunday, you know, watch for some of the things tonight because whether you're playing against Mississippi Valley State or, you know, the Los Angeles Lakers, it doesn't matter who you're playing. You can communicate on defense and you can hustle back in transition and you can do what you do on offense, which is move the ball. You know, look, Indiana only had 11 assists tonight, an assist rate below 50%, which is just not what this team does when they're playing well. And as Tom Crean said, he's ashamed by their lack of ball movement. He said, we'll get it fixed. And that, to me, is what I'm going to be watching for on Sunday. I think the Mississippi Valley State game now takes on some extra added importance just because of the context, because of what happened tonight and because of what's looming after that game. We need to see Indiana get back to good habits, communicating, doing all the things that they've been talking about. You know, at some point now, we've got to get out of talking about these things in post-game press conferences and actually doing them. You know, I saw uh, Andrew Hussey says Thomas Bryant and, and James Blackman Jr. both cited lack of communication as a key factor in the loss. And that's great that they recognize that, but we've been talking about that now for a few weeks and it's time to actually fix it. And tonight highlighted what happens when these issues that we've been talking about, when they don't actually get fixed and when we don't shoot the lights out to compensate for them. And it all came to a head tonight. It's a bad loss for Indiana. Uh, but if some good can come out of it. And if it spurs change on some of those things that have seemed resistant to change, then maybe later in the season, we're looking back on this as a positive. But I have to say right now, it's hard to see that silver lining. 
because this is just a disappointing loss that halts a lot of positive momentum for Indiana. And now it's up to the players to pull together and get that momentum uh, back going because this roster still has the potential to do great things, but they're not going to do anything even good if they play like they did tonight. Well, thank you for joining us on this episode of The Assembly Call. We always appreciate you joining us for these uh, cathartic uh, therapy sessions after losses. That's why we're here, to celebrate after wins and commiserate after losses. Um, it's certainly more fun doing it after wins, but hey, it may be even more useful to be here after losses. Uh, Indiana's next game against Mississippi Valley State, Sunday, November 27th, 4 o'clock Eastern time. That game is on ESPN3, so a little bit different for that game. Yeah, ESPN3, I know, strange. Um, but... I, I will simply say to close uh, to all of you living in the United States, celebrating Thanksgiving this week, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I speak on behalf of all of us here at the Assembly Call when I say there is nothing that we are more thankful for than our audience. You are so generous to us with your time, with your attention. So many of you have been generous with your donations and uh, you enable us to do what we do and to host this show and to have this place for all IU fans to come after games. So thank you. We are just incredibly grateful to you, uh, more really than words can express. And we wish you all a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. And we will talk to you Sunday after IU Mississippi Valley State. Go Hoosiers.